Kevin Chen, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Listen, I, I want to begin with your outside fact checkers, because Meta says you have the largest team of that to prevent the spread of misinformation and disinformation. But what does the company do for those who are responsible for the spread of misinformation, disinformation? Yeah, I, I think it's important to distinguish the two things. So, you know, when you think about misinformation, that's actually information that people are sharing that is false, but they don't know that to be the case. Um, And so that could range anywhere from, um, you know, your family member sharing something that's verifiably false, um, or it could just be people's opinions, uh, which are a bit of a gray zone. And so I think for those kinds of things, what we want to do is we want to be uh, putting our network of fact checkers to fact check certain content to make sure that um, people have more context and have accurate information about what's being said on the platform. But really, the, 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 the more difficult challenge is the other one. It's disinformation. Disinformation is different because this is people sharing false information, but they know it's false. And actually, they're doing it for certain strategic ends, whether it be financially motivated ends or it could be geopolitical, um, ge- geopolitically motivated ends. And so for those, um, we are actually very tough. Any disinformation um, that we find on our platforms uh, or that's reported to us, we will investigate. And if we can confirm that this is, in fact, malicious actors that are behaving in uh, what we call an inauthentic way, meaning they know something to be true and are yet are saying something else, um, if we know that this behavior is present on our platforms, we actually investigate and then we remove Um, Not only the accounts that are perpetrating this, um, but also all the content associated with those accounts. Um, And then we take additional measures uh, to make sure, using various signals, to make sure that these people um, actually aren't able to return to the platform to try to continue to do what they've been doing. Okay, so so if you will, can you talk to us about the tools you use then? You you talk about tracking it, uh, investigating it. Uh, talk to us a bit more about the tools that you actually use here to identify and stop disinformation. Sure. So we're looking at really two broad sets of tools. One is a human uh, review. So we actually have hired, uh, we have you know close to 40,000 people working on this globally. We do have also experts that have been trained in this kind of work, investigative work uh, in signals intelligence. Um, that are helping to investigate these things. And so we will do proactive reviews to find these things ourselves. But like I said, we also have a team of experts that look at um, different networks around the world and try to map those networks to whether or not they have a presence on our platform and then do that hard investigative work. So there's human review. Um, But then there's also uh, the proactive uh, artificial intelligence and automated reviews that we do. And that is really allowing us Um, to do this at scale. So what we mean is we're able to actually go in and have the systems um, go and and, and detect potential uh, inauthentic behavior in a way that you just wouldn't be able to do with with the time and the the human resources that you have um, if you just relied on people. So through a combination of these two things, uh, we want to be able to ensure that the platform remains safe and secure um, for the many Canadians who, who benefit from the platform every day. Okay. What about AI? Of course, it's being used more and more. But are there now or will there be labels to identify artificial intelligence generated content? Yes, that's a really good question. So, you know, as I just indicated, we are using AI and we have been for many years to automatically try to identify and, and detect risks and threats to, um, to the security of, of, of things that are happening on the platform. With the new, uh, with the advent of new technologies like generative AI, where there are uh, now, the, you know, artificial intelligence is able to generate almost, um, you know, lifelike images and videos, we have added an additional layer uh, of protection uh, and transparency, whereby, um, A, you know, if, if there is um, industry standard um, watermarks um, and other signals on images that are created by generative AI, um, we will label those as such so that when you are you when you're on Facebook or Instagram and you encounter these images uh, or videos, you will be able to uh, see that they're clearly labeled as generated by artificial intelligence. Um, but the other thing that we do um, is for advertising. Um, we're going to now require for any kind of political advertising uh, that uh, people may choose to run if it is 
generated through artificial intelligence, we will require the advertiser to disclose this in, before they're able to actually run the ad. Okay, I, I'm wondering about education now then too, because you know here you have Facebook, you have Instagram, the, the most used social media platforms out there. Mm. What is Meta going to do in terms of educating users about AI and identifying AI? Again, very, very good question. I mean, I think there's two things. We obviously have a responsibility to be transparent um, and provide people with as much information as possible. And so, again, some of the labeling work that we're going to do where we try to auto detect effectively um, the, the, the presence of Gen AI material, whether it be photos or videos, we will want to label those as such so people can see that. Um, but I think on the other hand, uh, a bigger uh, effort that needs to be done is to work across the industry, but also with civil society um, to develop digital literacy tools, um, to develop different resources um, that we can actually share more broadly uh, with the public, whether, it, whether it's people on our platform or people who encounter these things in other parts of the internet. We do want to make sure that we get as much information to people as possible to be more uh, to be thinking about these things critically and to understand how to better identify uh, content that's been made synthetically, um, but also ideally how to use these really great technologies um, for really positive use cases, how to augment the way they work, augment the way they learn, uh, augment the way they interact with people. Okay. Listen, uh, in your previous question, you, you referenced the, the idea of political candidates, and I do want to talk about the political process, uh, but as a bit of an entree to that, I, I do want to, to ask a question about the Online Harms Act here in Canada, because Meta did make the decision, once that act came into force, that uh, Canadian users would be blocked from news on, on your platforms. But at the same time, uh, we're now seeing, and, and, and essentially uh, studies showing, that there is an increase in disinformation and misinformation as a result of that choice. What's your response to that? I'm not sure that I've seen that I've seen those kinds of studies. To be honest, I mean, I think what we've seen is that most people um, who are coming to our platforms uh, are actually looking for engagement with friends and family, um, and so what we've actually seen is increases in people's usage of Facebook and Instagram to do those sorts of things. Um, I think that you know, sort of um, news content has been a vanishingly small piece uh, of the Facebook content for many, many years now, something like south of 3%. Um, and so what we try to do in an election context, for example, and what we've done in 2019 and 2021, and I think we hope to do so in the future, um, is to make sure that we're connecting with uh, authoritative sources of information. So for example, um, like Elections Canada, we've had a strong partnership with them, where we're actually getting the, 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 the right factual and best information to Canadians about particular events uh, when they need it, like during an election. Okay, uh, let me pick up. That's a Canadian example. Back in 2020, though, in the US, uh, Facebook essentially dissolved its civic integrity team. So, so I'm wondering what you have now in place. You, you mentioned the work here in Canada with Elections Canada, but what have you put into place in terms of ensuring election integrity? How does that work? Well, we've been working on this, as you know, for many, many years. We, we had a Canadian Election Integrity Initiative um, in Canada in 2019, and we had it also in 2021 for both of those elections. Um, and I think you can uh, anticipate that we will provide and, and be focused on the same kind of, of, of initiatives and, and tools and tactics uh, for the future election, when, whenever that will be. Um, so we actually feel pretty good about it. We have 40,000 people around the world working on global security, and that includes for Canada. And typically, while I can't commit to the specific things that we will do and what may happen in a year or, or year and a half's time, certainly what we have done for elections this year, it's, it's, it's 2024, it's a very big year for elections globally. Um, I think somewhere on the order of 4 billion people head to the elections uh, polls um, for, for this year. And what we are doing is, for these countries is we're ensuring that we are creating specialized units um, that are just focused on safeguarding um, the security uh, of our platforms for each of these elections. Um, and so we apply many of the the tools and tactics that we pioneered back in you know 2019 and 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 um, and, and, and subsequent years um, to address these kinds of threats, and I think we feel um, good about the track record. I think independent research has shown that in fact 
the 2019 and 2021 elections in Canada were pretty clean, to use the words of, of experts who have studied this. Um, and so we, we're, we're, we're getting ready uh, for a robust and, and, and very vigilant posture um, for, for the future. Um, but uh, but I, I feel generally good because the, the, the track record and the independent verification of our track record has been pretty good in this regard. Okay, except, and if you, if, you know, respectfully, in, in the United States, Meta said that political speech is ineligible for fact checking. And that applies to photos, videos, other content created by uh, candidates, essentially giving candidates carte blanche to, to put out what they will on your platforms. Why are politicians exempt from fact checking? That's a very good question. Um, I think you will find that, in fact, that is largely the case. Um, almost for um, any institution um, that is trying to uh, facilitate people's ability to speak. And so the the way we're thinking about it is um, public figures, politicians, it is who are campaigning, you know, in in this case, we're talking about an election. um, It's really for um, the democratic process. It's for people like you in the media. It's for their their adversaries uh, in other political parties to challenge the campaign, to challenge what they are putting out there as candidates, because that is a democratic process. It's not proper, and I think you would agree, it's not proper for a private sector company to be able to decide whether or not an individual candidate in a democracy, you know, it is not proper for a a private entity to be deciding whether or not that person should have the right to say what they want to say. Um, That is a a, a process that needs to be sorted out through the democratic process. We are a platform that enables uh, people to share and engage with the electorate, um, but we certainly don't want to put our thumb on the scale um, in any particular way. We do have centuries of developed institutions that do that in in an election campaign context and and we think it's best for them to do that okay so so will that then apply to the canadian election if and when that happens i I think if you look at our community standards so these are the content policies that govern who can say what on our platform and what they can say we're pretty clear that um, public officials especially politicians um, they uh we we, are not going to uh, fact check people because because the, the the whole point of an electoral context is to is to is to have people decide based on the nature of the campaign and their interactions with other political candidates, but also with the media. Okay, so you've referenced it already a bit, but I, I'm I'm hoping you can just put it all in one for us right now. We, we are expecting, <clears throat> excuse me, we are expecting an election come fall of 2025. Mm. What is Meta already doing right now to put things into place to make sure that election uh, is not influenced by disinformation on your platforms, especially since foreign interference is such a big matter here in Canada right now? Sure. Well, I mean, again, I think what we have done and will continue to do is make sure that we have the right resources and expertise to bear on to, to bring to bear to this issue. So we do have forty thousand uh, people working on security, uh, in, including elections around the world. We do have a network of fact checkers globally around the world. We partner with uh, the AFP in Canada to fact check articles um, and um, and other content that may be out there that people are sharing. Um, but we also uh, are going to be partnering with various organizations around uh, around the country. Now, again, it, we're, we're a bit uh, far away from the from the election per se, so I'm not at liberty to share the specifics of of, of what we're planning to do. But uh, in the past, we've worked with civil society groups, um, we have worked with uh, Elections Canada, uh, and we've worked with other organizations to make sure that people a get the um, get the right information about where and when and how to vote, um, but also how to ensure that candidates uh, stay safe um, you know, during a campaign uh, in the online space, um, and also making sure that people have certain resources and tools to be able to read and understand and engage with content in a critical, digitally critical, uh, digitally literate manner. Um, so we are doing all those things. Um, and we have done them. And again, the track record for the last two elections, 2019 and 2021, confirmed by independent experts, has been actually quite good. Um, and so we will continue the work. We're not certainly sitting on our laurels. We will remain vigilant. Um, but, um, 
but we feel that we have a, a very good uh, handle on how to address this, this challenge. Um, and so we look forward to working with all of Canadians and all of, public, all of the public institutions out there to address it when the next election is called. Kevin Chen, thank you for the time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.